Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? I'm going to show you how to use the refine tool for selections to get you quicker and better results. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, I'm back in Vienna, so please don't miss out on my welcome back live stream tomorrow on the 27 June 2021, 8 p.m. CEST. And please write in the comments what kind of objects are you selecting the most. Let's get started with this tutorial. So as you can see here, we have a shoe that is red on a red background. That is rather difficult for the selection because it has the same color and it also has in some areas the same brightness. So we want to look into how to use these refine options here. This one is what I'm talking about to make this selection better. By the way, here's a very important point to understand is this refine tool can be used for any kind of selection, not just for the selection brush. You can also use it for the flood selection tool. You can use it for the rectangle tool. You can also use it for the freehand selection tool. As long as the tool is active, you have this choice. And of course, as long as the selection is active, you can see I make a selection here. I go to another tool. I don't see the refine option, but my selection is still there. So I can still go back to my freehand selection tool or any other tool for that matter and click on my refine button. And then I get this option to refine my selection. Okay, so now have a look at what this is actually doing. In this case, I want to use the selection brush tool and I will simply paint into the shoe here to select that I, of course, want to have the shoe. And one thing to realize here that is very important is that we have an option to add and an option to subtract. So if our selection is going a little bit overboard, a little bit too far, we can still subtract areas and we can add areas, for example, down here, you can see it took a little bit of the shadow. That's not great. So let's go to subtract and then we click here a little bit to select less and to be closer to the shoe because let's say we don't want the shadow. Sometimes you want the shadow, not always. Here we want to have a little bit more. Don't click on the background because then it will start to select that. And you can see here that this is actually pretty quick. Affinity Photo is doing a really brilliant job here to selecting a red shoe from a red background. That is not easy at all. And also you can make your brush smaller so you can reach into these areas where it is a little bit harder to get in there. So this is, of course, already pretty nice, but we want to improve this further. And I will show you how in a second. So now that we have done this, we are going to click up here on Refine. And we're going to get this box. Now, Affinity Photo is thinking a little bit what is going on based on the content of the image. This is the important part here. And we can see what is happening when we go to black and white, because black and white will actually show you a preview of what a mask would look like, what the alpha channel would look like. And you can see here when we zoom in here, this is actually taking interest in the edge and how this is changing from the structure of the shoes. And when you go here, you can see that this is actually structure we are also finding in the image. Of course, this is not ideal for what we want to have in a selection because, and this is the important part here, is you have these preview selections. So you can say, how does it look on a black background? If I would copy it over on a black background like this, you see, how does it look on a white background? Then the black and white version I already showed you, this is the basically simulation of the mask and then also transparent. So how does this look without the background? And here you can see that we have a lot of these transparent areas looking through and that looks not that great. Maybe sometimes you want to have these details in this case, probably not. So how do we change this with these sliders? Now let's go here real quick to black and white. And you can see here, first of all, when I use the border width, it's changing to the color picture again automatically. And I get this white line around my object, right? And this is actually the area that Affinity Photo is taking into consideration to make the selection. So if I make this really white, 
you can see that this will take a much bigger area into consideration for these darker and brighter values and deciding what is part of my object, what is not part of my object. And of course, also this border is happening around the shoes. So you can see suddenly also back here, we have these areas where we see a lot of the shoe taken away basically. So we want to keep the border rather small in this area, but not too small, of course, just so it can select the areas it needs. So let's go like this. And this already looks pretty nice, but we still have these details. How can we fix that? Now here you can see we have smooth and with smooth, I can basically smooth the border down to have less details included. And of course you can go very strong here. So this will basically create a line around the shoe. But what we have to take into consideration here is that we are going to miss some details if we do that. So let's go here, for example, to transparent. And you can see here, if I use a little bit of smooth, this is going to look pretty nice. And I can really decide how much I want to smooth the surface. But look at this area here. When I do it too much, I'm going to lose this detail and we have just a round tip of the shoe. So that might not be ideal for your representation. If you, for example, want to show that picture in a store, it would make the tip of the shoe look different than it actually is. So let's reduce this a little bit here. And you can see now we have these nice details back in our shoe tip, right? So decide here with smooth how much you want to take away and how much you want to smooth the surface. Another thing you can do here that is sometimes very useful is to feather. And what feathering does is actually it's going to blur the border area of your object that you are selecting, right? Not the object itself, but the mask, the selection is going to be blurred. Again, let's set an extreme example here. And you can see how this is getting blurry and we get a lot of transparency in here into the shoe. So of course we don't want to have that, but sometimes this can be good, especially if we have fragmentation in our selection. Let's see if we can see this somewhere here. I will turn off the smoothing again and let's see. For example, here you can see you have these fragments here. You see where you have these brighter squares, darker squares, and that can look terrible. Depending also on the image resolution that you're using, this will be a bigger problem with lower resolution images. So you can see if I turn on feather here, for example, for one pixel, I'm getting rigged of this fragmentation here. So this is really helping me making a better selection and getting me a better end result. And then again, of course, in this case, up here, we have these elements. So let's ramp up our smoothing here a little bit until, for example, here, that looks pretty good. Okay, then here's another thing we can use. It's the ramp and the ramp right now is at zero percent. I will go to transparent again to show you what it does. So if I set the ramp to minus 100, you can see that this is eating into the shoe. It's cutting into the object to take some elements away from that. If I go on the other hand in the other direction, plus 100 percent, then this is giving me more of the background, right? So I'm seeing, as you can see here, parts of the red background right now. It's looking a little bit pink because it is transparent and we see this brighter checker pattern in the background. Now, what this does, what this can help you with is, for example, if you would have a darker border or a brighter border around your object while you are doing that selection. So with that, you can make your selection a little bit smaller, take away that bright border around it, take away that dark border around it and get a really beautiful selection of your object without that border, right? So that's pretty helpful here. Of course, we still have our adjustment brush. Matte is where you simply paint over the border and let Affinity Photo select what is background, what is foreground. You can also paint in the foreground where you see that this is actual foreground to make that selection a little bit easier or paint in the background. And with feather, you can actually paint on certain areas to make them blurry, like with the feather I showed you before. So this can also be selectively applied. This is very, very nice. And you can, of course, also set the size of your brush that you want to use here to do these adjustments. And here's the last part. This is really important, the output. 
Right now I've set it to selection, so when I click on apply, this will simply give me a selection. But you can also say, I want to have a mask as an output. I want to have a new layer or I want to have a new layer with a mask. Let's take the last one here to see what is happening. So I click on apply and this has created up here a new layer with a mask. You can see here I have still the original layer, so this is completely non-destructive. I can turn off the mask to get my original picture back and I have a mask on top of that. And here is a last trick. When you hold control and click on your mask, this is selecting the area that is also selected inside of the mask. So this is how quick you can create a selection from an existing mask. Thank you very much for watching. Maybe if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, click the bell button, click the like button, leave a comment, all these cool actions. See you soon and maybe join my live stream tomorrow. Bye.